Section 11.1 .1 is solving systems of linear equations with substitution and elimination. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So a system of equations is one or more equations, a collection of one or more equations with at least one variable. A consistent system has at least one solution. An inconsistent system has no solution, so that would be like a set of parallel lines that never intersect. Independent equations have one solution, so that means that they cross in one place. You have one point. Dependent solutions are identical or coincident, so that would be like two, the exact same lines. And right now we have two methods of solving systems of two equations or in a little bit when we get into systems of three equations, which is substitution and elimination. So first we're going to talk about solving a system by substitution. So when you solve a system by substitution, you solve for one term that exists in both equations and substitute into the other equation. So here we have a system 3x minus 2y equals 5 and 5x minus y is equal to 6. So I'm going to solve the second equation for y. So I moved y over and I isolated it in the second equation and I have y equals 5x minus 6 so now I'm going to take this and plug this in for y in the first equation. Make sure you plug it into the other equation otherwise everything's just going to cancel out. So y equals that so you can replace it or substitute it into the other equation. So when you plug it in for y, you get 3x minus 2 times y, which is 5x minus 6, is equal to 5. So go ahead and pause the video and solve for x. So when you distribute and you simplify, you get x is equal to 1. So we have x now, we need to solve for y, and again, we're going to substitute. You can substitute it into any of these three equations. I'm going to substitute in the second one because it's already sub for y. So I'm going to play it, plug x in for x in this second equation. So when you plug in x for or 1 for x, you get y equals 5 times 1 minus 6. So y equals negative 1. And these are the intersection of two lines. So when two lines intersect, they always intersect at one point. So your answer should always be written as a coordinate point. So your final answer is 1, negative 1. So elimination method. For elimination method, you want to get one variable to have opposite coefficients. So you're going to have to usually multiply one or both equations by something to be able to get your coefficients to match. When I look at this, you have two options. You can either multiply this bottom equation by a negative 3 to get your y's to be opposite coefficients, or you can multiply both equations by a 2 to get your x's to be in opposite coefficients. I'm going to do that because I already have a negative x. So I didn't touch the first equation, so I just moved that over. The second equation, I distributed a 2 to everything. So you get negative 2x plus 2y is equal to negative 6. And then I'm going to add these two equations together. When I do that, your x's cancel out, and you're left with 5y is equal to negative 5, or y is equal to a negative 1. So we use elimination to eliminate one of your variables. Solve your remaining equation. And then you're going to take this and substitute it into either equation. I'm going to substitute it into the bottom equation just because it's more simple. So when you substitute y equals negative 1 in, you get negative x plus negative 1 is equal to negative 3. Add 1 to both sides, divide both sides by negative 1, you get x is equal to 2. So your final answer is 2, negative 1. So those are the two methods that we use to solve systems of two equations. Substitution if it's pretty simple and you can solve for one variable or elimination if it's easier to cancel to uh, one variable out. So we're going to use these to solve systems of equations that come out of word problems. So here we have a restaurant manager who wants to purchase 200 sets of dishes, one design costing $25 per set and another design costing $45 per set. And she only has $7,400 to spend. So she's going to get a mixture of these two designs and we need to know how much of each. So whenever you're solving a word problem, the very first thing you should do is define your variables. So I let x be the number of design number one and let y be the number of design number two dishes. You could use variables that represent the things, but since these are both dishes, I just used x and y. And then usually each sentence is a equation. So the first sentence says a restaurant wants to purchase 200 sets of dishes. So the total that she's going to have is 200. Total is always addition. 
So your total, if you add the number they buy for X or the first design and the number they buy for the second design together is going to be equal to 200. The next part is money. So for every one of design one that she spends, it's going to be $25. So it's going to be $25 times how many ever of design one she buys plus $45 times how many of design two she buys and she wants that to be equal to the $7,400 that she has. So now we have our system of equations. Go ahead and pause the video and solve for how many of each design. So I used elimination method. You could have just as easily used substitution for this one, but I multiplied the top equation by a negative 25. So you get negative 25x minus 25y equals negative 5,000. And then I added the two equations together. So your x's cancel out. You get 45 minus 25, which is 20y. 7,400 minus 5,000 is 2,400. Divide both sides by 20, you end up that y is equal to 120. And then I plug that into the top equation, you got x plus 120 equals 200, so x has to equal 80. So that means that you should get 80 of design number 1 and 120 dishes of design number 2. Because this is a word problem, you don't need to write your answer as a coordinate point, you just need to answer the question. Now we're going to talk about systems of three equations. So basically now we are in the three-dimensional plane. We have three variables. So we have x minus 2y plus 3z equals 7, 2x plus y plus z equals 4, and negative 3x minus, uh, sorry, plus 2y minus 2z is equal to negative 10. So on these, what you're going to do is you're going to pick one variable to eliminate from two separate pairs of equations. So when I look at this, I see um, z would be a pretty easy one to eliminate any of these. I chose y because I already saw that you had some opposite signs here. You had a negative 2y and a positive 2y already. Any variable would be fine as long as you pick the same variable for both pairs of equations. So I'm going to eliminate y and if I look at this, I see that equations 1 and 3 already have opposite signs for y, so I'm going to match those up. So I matched those up, they already have opposite signs, and then I'm going to do elimination method just like I did with two variables. So x minus 2x, excuse me, x minus 3x is negative 2x. Negative 2y plus 2y goes away. 3z minus 2z is 1z is equal to a negative 3. So now I have equation with just two variables. So now I'm going to go back to my equation and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to eliminate y from another pair of equations. So I can't pick 1 and 3 because I've already done that, but I can pick any other pair. I'm going to pick 1 and 2 because I see that they already have opposite signs on their y coordinates. So I'm going to leave the first equation the same. And I'm also going to multiply the second equation by 2 so that they have opposite pairs or opposite coefficients. So the first equation I left the same, x minus 2y plus 3z equals 7. The second equation I multiplied by 2. So 4x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 8. So now I'm going to add those. And I got 5x plus 5z is equal to 15. I just divided everything by 5 to make it a little bit simpler. You don't need to, but just reduces the equation a little bit. So now what you'll notice is we have a system of two equations with two unknowns. So negative 2x plus z equals negative 3, and x plus z is equal to positive 3. So go ahead and pause the video and solve this new system for x and z. So you can use substitution or elimination method on this one. It's pretty easy, but I multiplied x plus z plus th equals 3 by a negative 1. So you get negative x minus z mi equals negative 3. And then I added these together to eliminate my z. So you get negative 3x equals negative 6, which means x is equal to a positive 2. And then I took this and I plugged this into this equation and I got 2 plus z equals 3, so z equals 1. So now you have two of your variables and you still need to solve for the third one. So just like the other substitution elimination methods, you take these two and plug them into any of these equations up here. So I'm going to take both x and z and I'm going to plug it into the second equation. You can plug it into any of them. I just picked that one since y doesn't have a coefficient. So you end up with y is equal to a negative 1. And just like the previous examples, 
you have two, or excuse me, three in this case, lines, so they intersect at one point. It's just a three-dimensional point. So x, y, z, your answer is 2, negative 1, 1. So here we have another system of three equations with three unknowns. In this case, though, one of the equations is already missing one of the variables. That means that it just exists in two dimensions instead of three. So whenever that happens, I always suggest eliminate that variable from the other two equations. So go ahead and pause the video and eliminate z from equations one and two. So in this case, they're already opposite signs. You don't need to multiply either equation by anything. So I'm just going to add them together. x minus y minus z is equal to 1. And then I'm adding that to 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 2. So when you add those together, you get 3x plus 2y, your z's go away, is equal to 3. So now we have two equations, this, thir this equation 3 here and this new one that we just found, with two unknowns. Go ahead and solve that system for x and y. So what you'll probably notice when you try to solve this, most likely using the elimination method, I multiplied this equation by a negative 1, so you get negative 3x minus 2y is equal to a negative 3. When you add them together, your x's and your y's cancel out. So on this one here, we got 0 is equal to a negative 3. That's your no solution. The way I know this is a no solution and not infinitely many solutions is that this is not true. So if all of your variables eliminate and you end up with an equation that is not true, 0 does not actually equal negative 3, then there's no solution. This is inconsistent. There's no way, there's no variable or no coordinate that makes all three of these work. So here we have another system of three equations with three unknowns. So go ahead and solve this system. I would start by eliminating x just so that we're all on the same page, but go ahead and pause the video and solve the system. So when you eliminate x, uh, I added the first two equations together, you get y minus 4z equals negative 3, your x, x's cancel out. And then I multiplied the second equation by 3 and added that to the third equation. So again, your x's cancel out. You get 4y minus 16z equals negative 12. And then I divided everything by 4 just to reduce it. So now you have y minus 4z equals negative 3 and y minus 4z equals negative 3. If you notice, those are exact same equations. So when you try to eliminate one of the variables, everything cancels out and you get 0 equals 0. So on the previous one, all your variables canceled out and you got a not true statement. It was no solution. On this one, all your variables canceled out and all your constants canceled out. So you got a true statement. Zero does in fact equal zero. This is your infinitely many solutions. So if it's a true statement, it's your infinitely many solutions. The difference between this class and math one was in math one, we left it at that. We just said there's infinitely many solutions. But there's actually a pattern to the infinitely many solutions. When you have two equations with two variables, those two lines, they lie on each other, and every point on the line is a solution. So that makes the line itself the solution. In this case, there is a line where these two planes intersect that creates infinitely many solutions, and we want to figure out what that is. So the way that we do that is we pick one variable to just leave as a variable. So in this case, I'm going to leave z as a variable. So when I go to write my coordinate point at the end, I'm going to have variables in it. Every single one, x, y, and z, are all going to have a z in them. Um, and that's the pattern that the infinitely many solutions hold. So I'm going to write my x coordinate and my y coordinate in terms of z. So here I have y minus 4z is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to solve this for y. So no matter what z is, I can pick any variable, uh, any value for z your y coordinate is going to be 4 times that number minus 3. So that's the pattern between the z coordinate and the y coordinate. So instead of an actual value for y, I'm going to plug in 4z minus 3. Now I need to do the same thing for my x. So I need to plug in my z and plug in my y into one of the equations and solve for x. Just like I would if I had actual numbers for y and z, now I'm just plugging in 4z minus 3 and z in for y and z. So I'm taking equation 1 
x minus y minus z is equal to 1. And every time I see a y, I'm going to replace it with 4z minus 3. So x minus the quantity 4z minus 3. Every time I see a z, I'm going to leave it at z. So minus z is equal to 1. So go ahead and pause the video and solve for x. So when I solve for x, I get x is equal to 5z minus 2. So that's my x-coordinate. So even though there's infinitely many solutions, there's a pattern to the infinitely, infinitely many solutions. Whatever your z-coordinate is, your y-coordinate is 4 times that minus 3, and your x-coordinate is 5 times that minus 2. You could have picked any variable to be the standard variable here. You could have solved made everything in terms of y. There's usually an easier one depending on how you solve the equation. In this case it was z. So whenever you have an infinitely many solutions you still should have a coordinate as your answer. Your coordinate is just going to be ter in terms of a variable. So now we have a word problem. Find a quadratic equation whose graph passes through the points negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 4, and 2, 4. So I'm going to use the standard form of a quadratic, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and a, b, and c are our unknowns. So we have three unknowns. Whenever you have a point on a graph, that means it makes the equation true. So if I were to plug in negative 1 for x, I'd get negative 2 for y. So I can actually plug those three in and use them to solve for a, b, and c. So I plugged all those points in. So I plugged in negative 2 for y, negative 1 for x, and I got negative 2 equals a minus b plus c. Same thing here, I get negative 4 equals a plus b plus c, and here I get 4 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. So now we have three equations with three unknowns. Go ahead and pause the video and solve for a, b, and c. I decided to eliminate b just because I already had one that was negative, you could have chosen just as easily A or C. So I picked equations 1 and 2, they're already opposite, so you just add them together. You end up with 2A plus 2C is equal to negative 6. I simplified it to A plus C is equal to negative 3. And then I multiplied the top equation by 2 and added it to equation 3. So you get negative 4 is equal to 2A minus 2B plus 2C. Add that to equation number 3, you end up with 0 is equal to 6A plus 3C or 0 is equal to 2a plus c. So now I have two equations with two unknowns, just a and c. I multiplied this equation by a negative 1 and got 3 is equal to negative a minus c. Add those together, you end up with a is equal to 3. I plug that in here, you get 3 plus c is equal to negative 3, so c is equal to a negative 6. I took both of those and I plugged it into the second equation. You could have just as easily have done 1 or 3. And you get negative 2 So plug both of those in, you end up with negative 4 is equal to 3 plus b minus 6. I had a typo before. Simplify this, you get b is equal to negative 1. So y equals 3x squared minus x minus 6, based off of where you got your answers. So in this case, I didn't write my final answer as a coordinate point, because I'm actually looking for the equation. So word problems, make sure you answer in context. So this has been systems of solution, uh, two and three equations using substitution and elimination method.